Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, October 14, 2024. Here for a weekly cross-stitch update. I have a good amount to share, especially considering I had two days less to show you than last week, because I filmed late last week, but here I am again on a Monday. Um, administratively, I'd like to start out by apologizing to a few people for my delay in <laughs> handling my giveaway from, it's probably been a couple months. I had the giveaway before, like I think back in August. I was intending to to mail them out as soon as I finished my whip parade, but then all the stuff with my dad happened and my whip parade got delayed. Lots of stuff got delayed. I eventually got a whole bunch out that I could mail from home that were local, not too big, um, that I had their addresses. So there's two people I still haven't heard from. Um, I have Jane Houston who got the Beechwood quilt pattern. And I think you are the one that commented on another video that you emailed me, but I never got it. So if you could email me again, um, to make sure it's spelled correctly, stitchin with no G, mommy, the number seven at gmail.com, or you can private message me over on Instagram or Etsy, and hopefully I'll get it this time. Um, and then Jill from the Pajama Stitcher, you got the house pattern. And I haven't heard from you either. Maybe got lost. So both of you, if you could send me your mailing address, I'd love to get that out to you. Sorry, it's taken me so long. <laughs> and then Caroline, Caroline, I do have your address. I just haven't gotten to the post office. Yours is a little thicker and it's international. So I probably need to go to the post office and I, I just haven't made it there. So I'm really sorry. <laughs> I do have your address. So I will try to get yours out this week if I can swing it. Um, and then hopefully I'll get the other addresses soon and can get those all squared away. So everybody else, I believe, I'm hoping has received them. I've sent them all out. I've received a couple confirmations. So hopefully they all made it where they were intended to go. And that's that, you know, life happens sometimes and things get forgotten. Um, I even intended to talk about this on a video a few times and just keep forgetting to bring it up until after I'm done filming. I'm like, oh, I forgot again. <laughs> so. There's that. Hopefully we can get that all finished up. Um, also, I did work on diamond painting this weekend. I have had a couple people comment on, especially on my whip parade, that I didn't show any diamond painting. And that is because I haven't worked on it in probably a couple years. Possibly, Smokey's back there, possibly because of her. I It's hard to pull things out like that with um, a kitten around. <laughs> I just never got back to it because I always have so much stitching I'd rather be doing. My daughter found one of her diamond painting uh, in her room this weekend. Hey, can we do that together? I'm like, I think it might work. So I pulled my mom's out. That is a picture of a palm tree on the beach. I don't really have a good picture of it. She started this. I think I gifted it to her and she started it and it was not easy for her to see the symbols. So I went ahead and took it from her and thought I'd finish it and give it back. So I didn't get another big section all the way done, which I would have liked, but I had one, one of the first colors on my, that I chose to do was like a, a dark gray or something. And it went down like 14 stitches and, and there wasn't anything else. I'll just do it and then I can do a, a, a swath 14 stitches deep, which I usually do like a 10 stitch deep one to kind of mimic a cross stitch pattern. But I may have bitten off more than I could shoot because I definitely didn't get that done in on Saturday in the time that I wanted to give it because I still wanted to stitch, of course. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll pull it out again on Sunday. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> I... I had, I stitched on like five, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, five different cross stitch projects on Sunday. There was no time for diamond painting. So um, I do hope to get that back out um, here and there, maybe on weekends uh, to try to finish up that strip. So I'll let you know if that happens, but I do enjoy it. It's just a little bit more uh, tricky to get out and work on than stitching because most of my stitching I can just open it up and start stitching. I don't have, it's very simple. <laughs> so anyways, there's that for those of you who are curious what happened to all my diamond painting. I do have another one that I'm stitching on blank 
a diamond painting canvas from a Heaven and Earth Designs pattern. And I haven't done any more on that one, but I thought I'd, if I have any time, I'll work on this one. Cause this one I would like to give back to my mom at some point. Okay, so last week, let's see, let's start with travel stitching. I did work on temperature turtles to get this caught up. I'm down here now in October, which is fun. I did start October last time, but I've done more. Still rather warm turtle. Still looks kind of summery, but that's the way it is here. <laughs> this is one over one on Caribbean Blue Jobelin by Witchell. And I did not do any more any back stitching here, but I did do a whole long length of thread of the dark green, except for the very tip of this flipper. So next week I, I'll try to finish the flipper and do the back stitching when I finish up these small patches, because there'll be a few big patches, but still a few small ones, so hopefully it'll go fast. So there's October, still rather warm, but we are coming down. So these are low 90s right here. This one was 88 at the end, so that's exciting. Today I think is supposed to be a high of 82. So we're, we're going down incrementally. <laughs> still warm, but not as hot as it was. So I'll take it. Hopefully it will continue to go down and stay down, not tease us for a week with 70s and then go back up into the triple digits. I don't want that to happen again. Um, my travel piece is Cats and Hearts. September by Kitty and Me Designs. I'm closer to being done, but not, I don't know. We'll see if I can finish this before, by tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. Here is where I'm at. This is 25 count, one over one, full cross. A white even weave. I got, um, I think the reds were done last time. I just barely started the light green. So now I've done a lot, several more of the greens. I think I'm on the, <clears throat> I'm on the second darkest green, I think. So I think I still need to finish that and then do the darkest green, which also has a little bit of back stitching and then a little bit of back stitching of brown. So it's not, it looks a lot closer, but it's not insignificant. So I do get a little bit of extra time to stitch on Mondays in the the car and whatnot so we'll see but if I I probably will finish it this week I just don't know if I'll finish it by my you know arbitrary deadline <laughs> of the 15th to be able to switch over to October or skip ahead to November so I will show you both of them and we'll see what I'm feeling when I finish it if I feel like I want to start October or November so here's October it's got pumpkins purple, green, and orange, which is perfect for October. And then here is November, which has a bunch of autumn leaves, which is also very pretty. So I like them both. I'm not sure which one will get started this week, assuming September gets done at all. Um, I would imagine I will finish September this week. I just don't know how quickly I will finish it. So we'll see. One of those will probably get started this week. All right, I did also get a chance to pull out Castle Homecoming for a little bit, which is nice. So I don't think I got to it last week, but I was able to talk with my sister this week and pulled out my mystery stitch along from last year by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I have this strip down here still to complete. I focused in on the dragon, so I got a little bit more of him finished. All right, so here is this one. And I'll I don't know. I guess I'll come in. Yeah. And you might see a before and after on the top. I don't think I did any more along the bottom other than the dragon. Um, I was about to, but I didn't get to it. So I think I just worked on the dragon this week where I filled in his pink in his wing and feet and then his fire. And I still have orange on my needle because the troll's jacket is orange. So I was going to go ahead and finish that off too, but I didn't get to that. So he's almost done and I have trying to figure out what, what I want to do. I think I might, um, there's white in here too for his teeth and some yellow. So I'll make sure that those colors get done first, but I might go back here and backstitch the rest of this tower so that this kind of whole section is all the way finished. He has some backstitching in him too. So there's some lines in his wing 
in his tummy. So I might add that stuff in before filling in the rest of this. And then maybe I'll go finish these animals and then before tackling this big thing down here. So it'll be a while, but this is a focus to try to finish this year. So hopefully I can keep making progress on that. This is not the one that was called for my two focus days um, yet this week. So it will just probably get a Friday again. And okay, so my focus pieces, regular stitching, I suppose, this week was um, I started Beachcomber on Monday and Tuesday, and I showed you that because I filmed on Wednesday last week. That's my new family piece for my mom. And then my piece to focus on a finish this past week was Honeybee by Mill Hill. So I worked on that on Wednesday and Thursday. And I also threw in a few extra lengths of thread on at least Saturday and Sunday. I may have done something on Friday, but honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> I didn't write it down. And on Saturday, I was thinking, did I, did I pull it out? I don't know. At least Saturday and Sunday. I, I know we did some beading on Saturday. And then one more length of thread on Sunday to kind of finish the section. So here is this one where I got to. And I'm pretty happy with that. There is still a lot left to go though, which is a little discouraging on this, this list of six things I have to try to finish this year. There's a, there's a good amount left on all of them. So we'll see if I can finish any of them. <laughs> but it is kind of nice to hop around and not just focus on one until it's done because then at least I'm still getting a little variety. So I went ahead and this whole kind of quadrant is now finished with the beads and all the stitching all the way up to the uh, the B and everything. So all of this is done, which is nice. It's a good feeling. And then I did the the some of the blue flowers. And these three have beads in the center, which is fun. So next time I will work on this is another pink flower um, and then kind of bring this down. And if I have colors on my needle, I might bring it down over here too, depending. This is just more background right here, but yeah. So there's that one. Decent amount completed. There's still a lot left to go. Um, and then my whip go piece that I worked on Friday and Saturday was Tapestry by Ink Circles. And this one, I had been kind of contemplating making this a car project next year because uh, it seemed like it was a good size and all the threads are fancy floss so they're in the package but as I was working on it this time I think it's a little bit too fiddly for a car project so I probably will not do that but here is where I got to this is 28 count ivory jobelin by Wichelt one over one full cross with a color conversion that I came up with Mostly Victorian motto sampler shop threads, but it's um, close to what's called for. I think they're called for general arts or something. So I just worked on some of these motifs throughout the, here to try to finish this quadrant, and then I'll probably go over and do this quadrant later. But there's so many different colors in each little motif, and the motifs kind of touch each other, so you're not quite sure where to stop sometimes. Um, so I don't know that I want to do this as a travel piece. But I do want to keep pulling it out and chipping away at it because it's not one that I need lingering for eternity, but it is nice. I did enjoy that. Hi, kitty. Are you going to come up and show your face? She's down here now. <laughs> She's getting closer. Um, and then Sunday I worked on Autumn Montage for my seasonal Sunday stitch. And... Um, I had a hard time getting into this one. So I worked on my temperature turtles on Sunday. I worked on a little bit of cats and hearts on Sunday while I was finishing up the Broncos game. Then I did one more, like, little bit on tapestry to finish a couple sections. So it was a good place to stop and put it away. Then I did one length on honeybee. Then I was just, like, fritzing around on my phone. I kind of was dragging my feet. <laughs> and I think it's just because the colors in this top band are so boring to me. They're definitely not my colors. But once I got into it, finally got into it, it was nice to work on. And I got 220 stitches, so not too bad, especially for a full cross project. So here is this one. 
one over one on mushroom, 28 count mushroom even weave. And I, there's a good amount of green right here and then some like yellowy that went along the bottom. That's what I worked on. I think just two, two different colors. Not too much. This is now at 2.13%. So I, I crossed the 2% mark. And I do enjoy working on it when I get it out, but I, it's just, I felt like I do drag my feet to get this one out sometimes. <laughs> I've noticed that before too. Um, what I was thinking of though, since I'm talking about my seasonal piece right now, is uh, Charlene over at what used to be the Witchy Stitchers, now they're Flights of Fancy. She, I, I just realized that she works on her stitching shelf by Amy Stewart um, within she works on the, the seasonal shelf during that season. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in case you haven't seen it before. But most of you, I'm sure, have seen it before. She has the mini, so it's a little easier for her. She, she uses it as a travel piece. Mine is not mini, <laughs> so that is not an option. But um, I haven't worked on this in a while because it's just so big. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming to pull out and figure out where to, where to go. Um, I had been doing it sometimes for challenges back when I was doing more of those because it's easy to find stuff in here to say, oh, let's work on a snowman, let's work on fire or a dog or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but her working on it, and I, and I have heard that before where you kind of, if it's during the spring, you, you choose something in the spring shelf. And she's, I think she's all along this side still, so she would just do as much as she can, you know, as she's working this way in that season. Um, Next year, I think I'm going to add this to my seasonal Sunday rotation. I'm already ridiculously behind Carolyn Zook with her seasonal montages because she works on them three months of Sundays and usually gets more done per Sunday than I do. And so I'm not, it's not a race, but she's already lapped me multiple times in her progress. So I'll just continue to do the montages at my own pace. I'll do them one month of Sundays per season. I'll continue to do my Celtic Ladies Collage one month per season per quadrant. Um, and then I'll do this one one month per season per shelf. So I think that'll be a fun um, variant on the Seasonal Sunday thing next year. And then whenever I finish my Celtic Ladies Collage, because that one's clearly the one that's closest to a finish, um, it probably won't be next year. But, you know, whenever that one gets done, I will bring back my floral crosses my seasonal floral crosses that were from Janlin and now now they're a, I think they're just cooler design studio um they're available on everything cross stitch and cooler design studio so I UFO'd those because I just wasn't feeling them whenever they got called but I do think I want to bring them back um when there's a hole in my seasonal rotation so when Celtic Ladies is done I think I'll bring those crosses back and work on those for one month um of Sundays and then I do have two more seasonal se series, the drawn thread ones that I just finished procuring the set. And I also have a set of small mini band samplers by Teresa Winsler that are also seasonal. So I have things to do for the seasons. There's just not enough time. <laughs> so eventually those might rotate through as well. But for now, I think I'll stick with this coming year. I'll do the Celtic Ladies the montages and stitching shelf for my seasonal pieces. And I think that'll be fun. Um, all right, plans. This week, instead of family pieces, I signed up for a uh, historical sampler company. I was like trying to think of that H word, historical sampler companies, Robin Christmas Patchwork Stitch Along. It's a mystery stitch along. And they sent this to me to participate in. And the first clue came today. So today is the day I will be starting it. Printed out the first clue. It's a little, little wonky with my printer ink, but this is the first clue. They just cut it into quadrants, which I'm not really a fan of because then it like breaks up the motifs in half. So there might be, I think there will be some motifs that I just won't start until I get the whole motif. So that means I'll have less stitching in this first part and more in the next parts, but that's okay. Cause I don't really, I don't park threads if I don't know where the next stitch is gonna go. I only park threads if I can see the next symbol and then I pull it up to where it's gonna go and then I just leave it. That's how I have parked in 
full coverages. But at this, I don't, don't know exactly where the next stitch is gonna be. There's nowhere to park it in my brain. So I'll just won't start the motif in the first place if I don't have the full motif. So this is the kit that they sent me. It's 32 count uh, linen in green, all the threads and a needle. And I um, was contemplating doing it one over one just because I'm crazy. <laughs> But the more I look at it, I think I'll just go ahead and do it two over two because it is kind of a darker fabric and it is linen. So those two things combined um, might make it hard to do one over one. So I might just do, because there's some slubs and then it's a little harder to see. I don't know, some lights it makes me like, oh yeah, I could do that. And then other lights it's like, no. Nah. So I think I'll just stick with two over two. And I'll be starting that today, working on that today and tomorrow. And hopefully I can get this clue mostly finished in these two days. So we'll see how that goes. And then I will be working on my next uh, rotation of one of the six pieces that I chose for my focus on a finished piece. Or trying to finish these six pieces by the end of the year. I spun my wheel and it shows again my Shine Bright sampler. So this is that one. I worked on it last week, not the one we just had, but the one before that. The very first time I spun, it spun this. Then I spun Honeybee, now it spun this again. So that's okay. I like variety. It would have been nice to pull something else, but um, this one needs a lot of work too. So I will be working, I think in these motifs were the next ones that are coming up. This is by the Fat Quarter Shop and well, it's by Bonnie and Camille, but the Fat Quarter Shop came up with the Ari Floss conversion for this particular colorway. I'm doing mine 40 count Morganite linen by Fiber on a Whim, one over two, full cross. So I'll be I'll be stitching in here, and if whatever color I get, I'll finish it in the motif, and then if I have more on my needle, I'll do it elsewhere. So I might get a smattering <laughs> coming up because some of these motifs have multiple colors and are, have a little bit more white space. So hopefully I can get some good, good progress on that. We'll see. Get that one done. And then my whip go piece for this week that I'll be working on Friday and Saturday is April Fairy. So this is fun. I haven't pulled this out in a while. Quick Stitch April Fairy by Hannah Lynn, artwork by, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm doing this in a particular very meticulous stitch by stitch method that so that each each uh, cross I come up in a hole that has zero or one threads in it already and go down in a hole with two or three threads in it already so that it's a very neat method. Um, it's very soothing kind of to do it this way but it does take a lot longer. Um, so but because it's a small piece it's okay. I won't do this on anything else, but I, I think, you know what, I'll, I'll keep doing this method on this particular design and I will enjoy that. So this is where this one is at. It's rose, 28 count rose Monaco, one over one full cross. And so I'll continue down this diagonal. And if I have time, I'll start back up on the top and do the next uh, 10 by 10, 10 stitch wide diagonal. So there's that, just working on some hair. There's a good amount of hair in that corner, so I'll be working on that for a while, I think. But that's okay. I am excited to get into the rest of it, her face, her butterflies, things like that. But I will ha be happy to work on it at all because it's been a little while since I pulled this out, so that'll be nice. And then I'll work on autumn montage again on Sunday, and hopefully I will not drag my feet <laughs> and I can get a little bit more progress on it on Sunday. So that's the plan for this week. Hopefully you have a wonderful week, um, whatever you're working on, and happy stitching. Bye.